Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. So let's wait for uh, one or two more minutes, and then uh, we'll start the session. So a couple of things. This uh, session has been recorded, and this session is live on the YouTube also. So if you will have any question, then uh, we'll. I do it that uh, in the last or whenever uh, Kavita wants to uh, just give you the permission, okay? And this is a common session where all the VLSA expert people and the non VLSA expert people are also there. Okay, great. So we'll wait for another two minutes and then we'll start. Okay, guys, so uh, let's uh, start the session uh, formally. So uh, this is uh, one of the session, like as a, you can say the guest session, which we usually do as a part of uh, our uh, foundation of LSI design, the, the course which we have as a placement oriented course. But this time what we are uh, also doing, we are just uh, uh, making sure like, okay, yes, uh, other people, uh, who are like uh, non will say expert tech like, uh, they are not the part of a foundation of philosophy design uh, we are just uh, uh, adding uh, them also like uh, giving them the opportunity to part of these type of sessions and we will uh, try like okay these type of sessions we will continue in future and uh, then uh, which uh, we will allow uh, everyone so that's that's the goal of uh, such type of sessions and we'll see uh, based on the feedback like uh, if we can add more and more things whatever we you guys are going to give us the feedback and then accordingly we will choose the topic we will ask the industry expert uh, just to give a session on the uh, the people who are the part of our batch or the uh, for the everyone similar kind of uh, things we have done just two year back uh, in the 2020 where we are uh, just naming it as a expert talk where we uh, were having a sessions for the three days uh, sorry uh, three sessions in a day once in a month we we have done that particular part in 2020 but this time we are just changing the format of uh, these type of sessions so it's going to be the regular uh, basic sessions not just like a very uh, uh, hi-fi 
things but even like the, those who are looking for the placement or those who are the part of uh, the maybe the industry or like i would say for the freshers uh, so such type of sessions we are going to discuss so the very first session in this uh, uh, in this area like uh, is going to be given by uh, kavita kavita mehta so i i would like to just uh, add few lines as such uh, i have added in the description also so she has uh, almost like more than 10 year of experience uh, when it comes to the teaching experience when it comes to the uh, the counseling mentoring of the student when it uh, when it comes to like uh, preparing them uh, for the corporate world and uh, so that's what uh, uh, she is doing from the last uh, several years and uh, she's uh, an expert in the low power design and uh, she uh, she has a book uh, uh, like she has, she has written that that, that particular book uh, long back and now uh, she was she was uh, one of the uh, uh, like one of the one of the organization if you're talking about like uh, 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 so she she uh, she worked there also now today uh, i requested her like okay if she can uh, uh, give us a, a small presentation a small session on a very very basic of uh, the low power side and uh, depending upon uh, like uh, the feedback uh, uh, like if you would like to know more about the low power in future also maybe then we will conduct we will we will ask uh, uh, kavita uh, ji that okay if she can present more about this particular part okay now i'm not going to take much time that's all uh, 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 like i'm like i said uh, i usually say like, okay i'm very very bad in introducing uh, people so kavita it's uh, uh, over to you now it's your session now you can uh, you can drive as you want to do it okay so just just to update you uh, like uh, almost like 30 34 candidates are here if you can see and uh, similarly if we will talk about uh, the youtube almost like because uh, you are also live in the youtube there are almost like uh, 25 people are already watching you <laughs> okay so i'm just creating a pressure on you so now over to you kavita please so you are on mute so if you can just uh, maybe thank you sir okay great hello good evening everyone welcome to this live session on low power design uh, i hope everyone is doing good and fantastic and uh, everyone is safe around you so on a good note uh, let us start uh, a brief introduction about the low power design sir has already introduced about me so i will not take much time and uh, this session is basically for all those VLSI aspirants who are willing to know the fundamentals or basics in VLSI. As we all know, the electronics industries have achieved a phenomenal growth over the last two decades, mainly due to the rapid advancement in the integration technologies, or we can say the VLSI has reached such top heights in the high performance computing, telecommunication, consumer electronics, each and everywhere we go, we find VLSI devices. So it is very important for us to have the knowledge, basic knowledge of what all VLSI design is composed of, what are the factors which are responsible for designing VLSI and what are the parameters which should be taken care of while designing any circuit. So we quickly start with the session. First of all, why VLSI? Now VLSI, the full form is very large scale integration, which involves packing of more and more logic devices or logic gates into a smaller chip. Technically, we can say it is a technique where many circuit components and the wiring that connects them are manufactured simultaneously into a compact, reliable, and an inexpensive chip. The tiny circuit components which are fabricated on the chip are called the transistors or more specifically we can say the MOS transistors, metal oxide semiconductor. Transistors are the building blocks of the circuit 
And whether it is a mobile phone, a smart speaker, a laptop, all are made up of transistors. Now, why we are giving more pressure on the low power VLSI? What are the advantages of low power VLSI devices? VLSI is important because it is very useful for compact design. So there must be some features which should be obtained after the VLSI device is manufactured. The integration improves the overall design of the circuit. Lower parasitic gives higher speed. That means the less the circuit components are there, then the speed will be higher. The integrated circuit must have low power and the discrete components have high power. So we, so we use MOS transistor for the fabrication. Smaller transistors require less energy, which results in overall less power consumption. Therefore, the device size should be smaller. All the connections and wiring are done on the chip itself so that it is highly reliable due to the on-chip interconnects. Now, the overall size is reduced. As a result, the cost of the circuit is also reduced. And in the last, manufacturing cost is also reduced. Now, I have a question for all of you. Can you name one of the most common gadget or VLSI device amongst all of us? Please answer in the message. Okay. Yes, the guess is most obvious and very right. That is a mobile phone. This gadget is the most inevitable part of our lives. We cannot live without mobile phones. Our life is incomplete without this small device. So what are the desired features when we go to the market to buy this mobile phone or cell phone? Let us see a few of them. First, we look for the long talk. That is, it should go for long hours so that we can study and the phone doesn't get switched off. The standby time should be more. Don't get confused by the standby time. Standby time just means when the phone is in the ideal mode, that time is called as the standby time. That means it is not actively used for the different applications. Next is efficiency. There should be multitasking in the phone. We should be able to switch between different applications while using the phone. The mobile, phone, the mobile phone should be sleek and small. And the most important and the major parameter which we look for is the battery backup. So we see the 70% of the users want long talk and standby time. Some of them want sleek and mobile, sleek and small mobile phone, while more battery backup is required by all the users. So how to achieve all this? This we are going to study today in the low power design. We can, we can conclude that the device should be powerful, compact, and power efficient. Now, in general, we can categorize that all the devices use, required by the users for any device, whether it's laptop, whether it's mobile phone, or any electronic device, which is made by chip, it should have mobility. Here, mobility can be defined as the ability for users to communicate anytime, anywhere with anyone. Next, it should be portable. That is, it can be connected to any network. Then it should be reliable. The cost effective, the cost should not be very high. And yes, the environmental effects should also be minimum. So these are the majorly required uh, or you can say desirable features for any VLSI device. Now, why we are seeing all these features or why we are studying about, about all these features, the motivation behind this is that we need the device with more battery time or you can say more power, and this can be accomplished by uh, shrinking the technology. That is, we'll discuss, uh, don't worry if you are getting confused, We'll discuss what is the technology and why it is shrinking day by day. 
more transistors are integrated on a chip that is the chip size should not increase but the transistors number should increase for this we are shrinking the technology the clock frequency is also increasing day by day power supply voltage is decreasing to achieve low power but in spite of all these factors the power dissipation is increasing at a very rapid rate but we have seen that for our devices we require low power dissipation so there must be some measures which must be included in the design at the physical level or you can say at various levels of fabrication so that the power dissipation is less in the manufactured device now the latest technology which is being used nowadays for the fabrication of the different chips before taking a knowledge about the technology let me briefly describe you about the word nanometer a nanometer is a tiny measure of length which refers to the size of the little transistor that is used for the making of the vlsi chip now the process size of the desktop cpus which was used in the early 2000 was 42 nanometer and nanometer refers to the size of the transistor now in 2013 desktop processors have been shrinking at a nearly constant rate and you must have observed in the devices also that the size is decreasing of the computer systems or you, now we have laptops farm tops and very small devices handy devices then came the 28 nanometer process followed by the 22 nanometer then in 2018 intel introduced its 10 nanometer sunny core processor while amd gave their 7 nanometer cpu which was based on the tsmc 7 nanometer technology according to the reports qualcomm the world's largest mobile processor manufacturer is already using the 7 nanometer technology for the bulk of its new cpus apple mediatek tsmc samsung they have already introduced 4 nanometer products which is a very big achievement now can you all please guess that where, what is the current research going on and how much nanometer technology is to be produced in the coming years? Any ideas? Any guesses? Yes, technology is now going to one nanometer. So can you imagine that what will be the size of the coming devices in the coming future? Now we have a table which gives the data from the previous years. Here the comparison is done for the different parameters on the basis of feature size, logic transistors, clock, chip size, power supply, and the total power consumed. We'll not go into much detail. We'll just take a quick look at the table. It is clearly visible that the feature size had, has reduced in the progressive years. Then the number of transistors have increased. The clock is also increasing. We can see the power supply voltage is being reduced. This is one of the key factor to reduce the power consumption. We lower the supply voltage. Then we, can, then we can see the power consumption. The power consumption is increasing, but we can see at the technology between 90 nanometer and 65 nanometer, the power consumption is almost the same. The power becomes the major factor when the technology goes down beyond 30 nanometer or you can say beyond 20 nanometer. Now, what is the significance of these smaller processes? We are saying that technology is going down day by day. We are moving, we are doing research for the one nanometer. Why all these things are going on? See, the smaller processes are preferred because of the following advantages. Processors perform better. For example, smaller transistors will take up less physical space, which will allow to pack more transistors on a single chip, which will result in more powerful processing. Packaging costs is also reduced. The power supply rail design becomes more efficient by the use of these small processes. The overall chip and the system cooling cost is also reduced. Noise immunity and system reliability. 
Now let me tell you about the noise immunity first. What is noise immunity? Noise, first you should know what is noise margin. Noise margin expresses the ability of a circuit to overpower a noise, a noise source and immunity describes the ability of the system to process and transmit information correctly in the presence of noise. Or in simple words, I'll tell you that noise immunity is the basic ability of any system to reject the noise which it receives and clearly understand whatever is being, whatever input is being received. Okay. For example, if I'm speaking and some noise is coming, but still your headphones or your system is able to deliver my noise. So it has the ability to reject the noise surrounded. Okay. Every system is composed of noise. You can't say that any system is noise free. We, we cannot have a zero noise system. There is always noise, but it is the ability of the system to reject the noise. So these smaller processes devices have better noise immunity and they are more reliable. And then the major point comes the battery life, which is specially required in portable systems. Portable system means the systems which we carry around, okay, which we uh, we can connect anywhere. We, uh, For example, our cell phones, the battery life is very important for those portable systems. Now, why power matters in SOC? SOC, SOC is basically system on chip. Whenever we design a system, or you can say it is a system which consists of a collection of components or subsystems, on a single chip, which are interconnected to perform a specific function by the users. For example, you can say microcontrollers. It is an example of the SOC. So why power is a major matter in terms of SOC or a major concern in SOC? Because of the following concerns. Packaging and cooling cost. Again, I have told you if the power dissipation will increase, the whole system will get high temperature due to which the transistors can heat up and they can get failed. They can get breakdown. So for that, we uh, require cooling systems also. But if the power dissipation is low, then the cooling cost can also be reduced. Digital noise immunity. Again, our systems work on the digital uh, inputs. We all know the digital signals. So digital noise immunity is also improved. Again, battery life is the same point. Environmental concerns, the heat is dissipated to the environment. This should also be reduced. Okay. Now, quickly we'll move to the power dissipation. I think uh, up till there is no problem. And if any query is there, you can message me so that uh, I can answer in the end. Now, Power dissipation, I have told you that it is the amount of power which is dissipated or we can say which is delivered in the form of the heat and that power is unused. That power is unused by the device and it is uh, given as a, uh, to, as a heat to the environment. Now, as the technology is reducing, the overall power is increasing. The cellular market or you can say the all the battery operated gadgets need low power uh, techniques to be applied on them so that there is less power dissipation. Now, what is power dissipation? Quantity of power dissipated can be defined as V cross I. Here V is the direct current voltage drop across the device, which is, uh, and its unit is volt. And I is the direct, direct current through the device. Its unit is ampere. Power consumption determines heat dissipation and energy consumption. There is a difference between power consumption and power dissipation. So don't get confused. In some books, you might find the difference, but let me clear the difference between both of them. Power consumption means the total power which is consumed by the device from the supply voltage. And power dissipation is the amount of power dissipated, or you can say the amount of power wasted, which is not consumed by the device. Half of the energy is consumed by the device for its operation and half of it is dissipated to the environment. Now it depends from device to device and the designing of the device that how much power is dissipated and how much power is consumed. Basically, when we talk, of, talk about the power dissipation, there are two main modes of power dissipation in CMOS circuits. Here we are discussing only CMOS circuits, that is the complementary MOS circuits. Maybe we'll discuss in another session about uh, in detail about the CMOS circuits, how they are designed and what are their 
different features now here we are just discussing about the par uh, part two types of par can be classified dynamic par and the static par dynamic par is dissipated when the circuit nodes are switching while the static par is dissipated in idle circuits okay now what is the difference between these two we'll see in detail this we have already told two components of par dissipation that is the dynamic par dissipation and the static par dissipation you can clearly guess from the name also the difference if you are not able to remember dynamic means changing dynamic is a general english word which means changing so changing means whenever we give input and we receive respective output okay and when the input quantity is changed so there is some switching activity there is some switching event from input to output some transition is there suppose one uh, i'll discuss from the figure in the next slide and the static par dissipation static means fixed fixed par dissipation it is not dependent on the switching activity of the device now we'll clearly discuss in the next slide so this is a simple circuit i have taken of a cmos inverter okay here we have two mos transistors connected the upper one is the pmos transistor and the lower transistor which is connected to the ground is the nmos transistor okay this pmos transistor is pulled up to vdd and nmos transistor is pulled up to pull down to ground okay we give input signal from the v in terminal and we get the output signal from the v out terminal now we all know uh, this is the circuit those who are aware of uh, some basics of the vlsi that this is the circuit of the cmos inverter now what is the work of the inverter or you can say it complements the input complements means whenever we give the input zero it gives the output as one okay now when the input is switched to 1 the output goes to 0 so this is the switching activity when the input is transitioning from a transit transition is taking from 0 to 1 the output is also taking transition from 1 to 0 so this activity is called the switching activity now we'll see one by one how the power dissipation is taking place in this circuit now before uh, discussing uh, the power dissipation for that particular circuit there are some uh, uh, electrical uh, relationships uh, in instantaneous power energy and the average power this you must know power as we have already seen this is the product of the drain current and the supply voltage and energy is the integration uh, over time of this instantaneous power okay and uh, average power is the energy per cycle okay so we integrate this power with respect to one cycle okay it's the average uh, average power is the instantaneous power over one cycle t so this is a uh, just formula you have to keep it in mind for the general knowledge okay now i told you uh, about the dynamic power dissipation transition takes place from 0 to 1 and 1 to 0 that is the charging and the discharging of the capacitance as you can see in the diagram whenever we apply input to the circuit suppose zero is applied now let's quickly discuss the functioning of this inverter when we apply zero the pmos circuit this is your pmos circuit now this is the property of the pmos device at input zero it gets on and the nmos gets off so whenever we apply zero input this circuit gets connected to the supply voltage that is the vdd okay now this vdd charges the cl this is the load capacitor charges it and the output becomes high this v not gets connected to vdd and this whole supply voltage is seen at the output so whenever we apply zero input we get the high output that is the one output now when we apply one input that is the high voltage the nmos is switched off or you can say is now is a off state and uh, pmos sorry when we apply uh, one input the nmos becomes on and pmos becomes off so at that time what happens this capacitor 
this capacitor gets connected to the ground and gets discharged by this circuit okay and that time the output is pulled down to zero so we can easily see when we apply one input the output transition is to zero and when we apply zero input the output is connected to vdd and this capacitor gets charged up to one output okay so this switching activity makes this charging and discharging of this load capacitor is responsible for the dynamic power dissipation okay again i'll repeat this dynamic power dissipation is due to the charging and discharging capacitance at the output node okay now static we'll discuss second uh, okay uh, there is one more point short circuit short circuit current is also a type of dynamic current only okay what happens when i am saying that at one input pmos is on at second input nmos is on but in between in between transition of these inputs and outputs there is one point at which both the transistors are on these both nmos and pmos are on at one instant when both are in saturation at that time there is a direct path this can you see this line in between this is the direct path between vdd and ground this direct path is responsible for this short circuit current this isc is the short circuit current whole circuit is short circuit now because vdd is directly connected to the ground okay this is one instant in between when both the transistors are in saturation okay so this will be the short circuit current and next is the static leakage if we say when there is no input we are not applying any input this device is in the fixed state it is off state but still we get some leakage currents due to which static leakage power is observed now what is static that also we'll discuss in detail first again you can uh, note down the definition of the dynamic power dynamic power is due to charging and discharging this i have already told you it is also called as the it is also uh, there is also contributor switching transient that is the short circuit current okay so we can say here cd represent charging discharging power and sc represent the short circuit power when we add both of them then we get the total dynamic power okay this is i have already explained the pull up network the pull up device that is the pmos and pull down network is made up of the nmos the charging current the vdd is connected the cl gets charged and when the cl gets connected to ground that is the discharging current and this switching activity leads to the dynamic power and this is a short circuit part this also i have already told you in between of input and output high input and low output and high output and low input between the transition the two transistors are on for some time then both are in saturation that time this current flows because the vdd is connected to ground ground there is a direct link or you can say there is a direct direct connection between the vdd and the ground short circuit current flows during this time period okay now the short circuit power this we have seen this is shown the two different cases okay large capacitive load is there that time output fault time will be greater than the input rise time and for the small capacitive load output fault time is less than the input rise time okay now this for studying this we need to study the complete uh, power delay and their characteristics and their transition diagrams and the waveforms which we maybe we'll discuss in the coming sessions or in future sessions okay right now you just remember that short circuit power is responsible because of the direct connection or direct path between the vdd and the ground due to the switching activity transitions at one moment the both the pmos and the nmos are on okay when there is large capacitive load that time we can say that the short circuit current is minimum and when the small capacitive load is there that time short circuit component is maximum
increases with rise and fall times of input now this rise time and this rise time and fall time requires a different complete session because it is a very big topic okay uh, this i have already told you decreases for larger output load capacitance okay this short circuit power is a small component of the dynamic power major component is the switching activity that is the switching power dissipation only due to the charging and discharging of the capacitance okay this is shown with the help of the waveform we have taken example of a ramp voltage difference between a square waveform and a ramp voltage is that ramp takes some time to for the charging okay and in the square voltage the slope is not very steep and a straight uh, uh, waveform is there but in this uh, rising time is more and the fall time is more okay next is a static power dissipation i told you the power consumed or you can say the power uh, dissipation when no gates are switching it is caused by the quiescent supply current that is the idd which is also called as the leakage current the total power and this total static power consumption can be designated as p static is equal to iddd into vdd vdd this static current does not exist in cmos as long as long as the input voltage is less than the threshold of the nmos transistor okay don't get confused by the technical terms which are written over here let me tell you in simple words what is static power basically what is happening the device is in the ideal state okay when the device is in the ideal state that means there time there is no switching activity no input transitions are taking place there is no input waveform the transistors are sitting in the ideal mode and no activity is going on but still how they are drawing the current from the supply voltage how is it possible then the device is off and still it is uh, drawing the current okay it is possible how suppose suppose if we take a uh, you charge your cell phone okay i'll give you a simplest example you charge a mobile phone and keep it in the drawer for few days okay you don't use it don't uh, call anyone don't use any application don't use any of the uh, messaging and all don't take pictures don't listen to music okay you will observe after few days you will find it in the switch off state you will never find it in the on state why because it was in the standby mode then where the power has gone yes this is a myth that in the standby mode the power is not consumed the power is still dissipated in the standby mode now how it take place for this we need to study the complete transistor working mos transistor working there is different phenomena over there uh, for the uh, when the current flows through the transistor for that before that there are three processes accumulation depletion and inversion if you have heard about these three terms until and unless inversion is obtained no current can flow through the transistor now to obtain the inversion surface inversion okay we completely have to change the charge on the surface of the transistor okay so for that we require strong inversion when you are able to change suppose there is a layer of positive charge on the surface so you may you have to make it you have to completely change the charge carriers into negative charge then only we can say the surface inversion has taken place a channel is formed and now the current can flow but in actual what happens sometimes in the weak inversion region also when there is less vt vt is the threshold voltage of the device the device should be off when the voltage threshold voltage when the input is less than the threshold voltage but what happens when the input is less than the threshold voltage then also there is a weak inversion region and in that weak inversion region some of the charge carriers you can say the minority carriers are able to flow through source to drain and the current is observed that current is the leakage current and that is responsible for the uh, dissipation in the standby mode now what are the leakage current i'll tell you here we are considering three types of leakage current as shown in the figure first one is the reverse biased junction leakage current so this is the you can see uh, see the mos structure this is source gate drain 
these are the terminals okay now this is the channel between the source and drain from where the current flows now what what happens i told you right now that when there is weak inversion region then also some minority carriers move from here to drain to source from here to here and this is the sub threshold leakage you can see this uh, dotted line current is a sub, sub threshold leakage current which flows in the weak inversion region and this current is due to the weak inversion region okay this is the one leakage current next we have the gate leakage now what happens we are telling again and again that the technology is going down and we are scaling it down so there is one oxide layer between the gate region and the substrate region in the uh, here you have seen you are seeing this is the gate region where we apply the gate to source voltage and here is a substrate so here we have a oxide layer the oxide layer thickness is also reduced as the technology is reducing okay scaling is also done for the oxide layer now what happens when the oxide layer becomes very thin the these charge carriers from the gate terminal are able to cross to the substrate okay from here this oxide layer is no more uh, it is used as a band gap between the gate and the substrate but these charge carriers from gate terminal are able to cross and move to the substrate region due to the thinner oxide layer so this current is called gate leakage current okay this uh, dot, bold arrow is this is for the gate leakage current okay three factors can be from gate to source due to this oxide layer okay this oxide layer is responsible for this leakage current this leakage current and this this leakage current and one more factor is there that is a reverse bias junction leakage current now what happens this source and this drain forms a reverse bias diode with this substrate okay as we all know that uh, uh, this source and this drain they are of if they are of n type then there is a channel over here and this substrate is of p type then this np will form a reverse biased junction diode and there is a reverse current which we have already uh, which you might have already studied in your basic electronics about the reverse diode current okay that is formed over here so that is the another factor for the leakage current here we can see in the example of the cmos inverter this is the nmos transistor gate leakage current will be there because of the oxide layer thickness here we have mentioned sio2 is a very good insulate good insulator but at small thickness electrons can easily tunnel across this thin simulation so they form a current even in the standby mode then this is a drain junction leakage which is a small leakage current due to this reverse bias diode okay between the diffusion regions and the wells of the substrate and third one is the sub threshold leakage current which i told you is because of the weak inversion region when the gate to source voltage is less than the vth vth is the threshold voltage which is responsible to make the device on but still in the weak inversion some minority carriers are able to move from drain, drain to source which forms the sub threshold leakage current this term should be remembered by all of you this is a very important topic and very Uh, this is topic of research because many devices are now being operated in sub threshold region also so sub threshold current is a very important parameter okay so we can uh, see the when the total participation from 0 to 1 uh, first para, first factor is composed of the dynamic power uh, dissipation the second one is a short circuit power okay which is uh, very small factor and third one is your static part in this idd leakage we have included every type of leakage current okay all the leakage current have been included in this now we see the major contributor of power dissipation is due to the switching power dissipation most of the power dissipation is composed of the switching power only the dynamic power only 75% share is by the dynamic power then 20% is because of the short circuit power and 5% uh, other 5% is comprised all the leakage currents okay the so leakage current is in some devices it may be negligible ideally it should be zero leakage current or static uh, power should ideally it should be zero but no device is ideal we have already discussed this thing that some or the other leakage is present even in the standby mode also 
So these are the three parameters, the uh, dynamic short circuit and the static. Now we are applying uh, low power design methods on these uh, uh, on these factors so that the total power consumption is reduced. Dynamic power dissipation is being worked on and uh, it has reduced to a significant value. Short circuit power is also getting reduced, but leakage power is increasing day by day. So because the devices are getting more compact and handy, so this leakage power uh, is the major contributor, you can say, for the portable systems, okay, for the battery devices. Now there is a, you can say a quiz or a simple question for all the students uh, listening this video right now. You have to estimate the power consumption of a wireless handheld computer and uh, the values which are mentioned, uh, VDD is 1.2 volt, capacitance is 20 nanofarad. The frequency on which this device is working is 1 gigahertz and the current flowing through the circuit is 20 milliampere. So you have to calculate the power consumption of this circuit. We, here we will use one of the formula which we have discussed in the slide and uh, you can answer that in the comment you can solve it and uh, give your answers okay this will be a slight uh, you can say homework for you all so thank you uh, from my side it's uh, over over to you sir Hi, thank you. Thank you, Kavita. Thanks a lot. So guys, uh, uh, <clears throat> maybe now we can have a, just um, the questions, maybe the basic uh, thing. So if you have any question, maybe you can just uh, raise your hand and then I can also unmute you. Or if you, want, uh, if you would like to communicate with uh, Kavita over the chat, just message uh, in the chat box do you want to guys if you don't have any question if you have any question just uh, let us know Okay, looks like uh, no question. Okay, good. So Kavita, I'm just just checking in the YouTube also if uh, anyone have any question, maybe. Okay, sir. Uh, you can address that part of that. Just give me one minute, one more minute. Okay, good. So, uh, guys, um, as uh, I have mentioned, like, okay, this uh, the purpose of uh, these sessions are uh, just to make it like uh, giving the. Okay, I think there is a one question: How the short circuit power increases by rising and the falling of the input? So, Kavita, do you want to address this in this session or the next session? The chat window, there is a one question. Sir, I can try. Okay, <laughs> sure. I never say no. Let me try. Here it was. Let me again read the question once. Uh, how the short circuit power increasing by rising and falling of inputs? Okay. 
so uh, first let me tell you again what is short circuit power short circuit power is basically the power which is consumed or you can say the power which is dissipated when the transistors are on when both the transistors on are on that is the pmos and the nmos now one thing you should be very clear that pmos is on when the input is low and nmos is on when the input is high okay we have already discussed it. now what happens when the input is switching if there is a uh you can say instant transition from 0 to 1 at that time okay the device is able to take a high voltage or a low voltage and it can immediately detect the input signal and uh, you there is some delay but still there is some delay in the device due to which the output uh, transition will take some time to uh, shift the uh, output according to the input okay but what happens for uh, suppose this is a ramp voltage as you can see this is a ramp voltage now what happens when the input is taking transition from 0 to 1 this is a slope you can see it is rising from 0 to 1 now at this moment at this instant pmos is on and nmos is off now what happened when the signal reaches over here this is the point where it is uh, where the vt um, the nmos is off but the pmos is on but what happens when the signal rises this is the input signal it starts rising and it reaches the vt of the nmos device can you see this dotted line this is the vt of the nmos device now what happens as soon as the signal reaches this point the nmos is also on but the pmos is already in the on state that is in the saturation the nmos or pmos before going in the off state goes to the saturation state so at this instant what happens now both the devices for this duration for this long duration until and unless the input is detected as one because the noise immunity is good but not that good that it will detect the signal at this portion only it will detect the signal as one at this portion only so for this between duration of time what happens both the transistors are in the saturation state as soon as the input reaches this level the pmos is off and the nmos goes into active state from saturation so what happens during this this time vdd gets connected to the ground because there is no cut off path if nmos is off then only the vdd is separated from the ground part but what happens when both are on there is a direct path vdd se ground mein chala jayega sara current due to that which current will flow short circuit current short circuit current and this will be maximum in between okay and after that as soon as the nmos is comes in the on state and pmos is off what happens there is no path from vdd cut off ho jayega pmos from the upper part of the from the pull up device will be cut off that time short circuit current again becomes zero same is with the activity when signal goes from high to low at that time also at this condition nmos is still in the on state but as soon as is it it reaches this point the pmos becomes on and for, and for this whole duration both the transistors are in saturation and at that time again we get the uh, short circuit current and when the signal output signal or you can say this ramp signal reaches the uh, vt of that particular device the nmos becomes off and the pmos is on so there is no direct path now the uh, ground uh, connection is disconnected from the upper part and then the short circuit current again becomes zero so i think i have made clear your point yes kavita so it's uh, crystal clear at least uh, i can see like okay <clears throat> you made a, a very good point so akash uh, any uh, is it clear to you yes so you. kavita now yeah now you are getting uh, like uh, your fan following is increasing there are a lot of questions on a youtube also so let's let's try to <laughs> answer that but before that uh, there is a uh, person sai uh, shravan so he is asking like okay how do we reduce short circuit power i mean can we reduce the time both pmos and nmos are on at the same time yes this thing i have told you right now in the one of the slides we have discussed wait we have discussed this point uh, maybe i have not elaborated in detail but uh, so maybe what happened yes, uh, kavita these people uh, joining in between that may be one of the reason yeah yeah, yeah sure 
uh, see over here we have discussed that if the capacitance load is large okay if the capacitive load will be large at that time the output fall time will be greater than the input rise time that means that uh, the for the larger output load resistance the most of the current is taken by the load capacitance only so there is no uh, much current left to go into the ground so at that time you can decrease the short circuit power that's a good point uh, kavita and but just again to... that is a trade off if you yeah. increase the capacitance load the delay of the circuit will increase yes <laughs> so uh, that's that's the thing so one more uh, one more point i just want to add here uh, shai shravan so uh, i think uh, uh, if if you uh, remember just right now kavita uh, mentioned one one particular uh, point like uh what is first you have to understand what is a short circuit uh, current so and why there is a short circuit current so short circuit current is because there is a path between vdd and vss and why there is a path between vdd and vss because uh, your nmos is also on or pmos is also on now if you want to reduce that particular time okay so that particular time frame you want to reduce so there are two factors so you just work on the time axis so which like uh, you know on the time axis in the sense the the transition time the transition time of the oh, input sorry. signal you just uh, change that particular transition time okay so if you will just work on that particular transition time if uh, if you will just reduce that particular part then it is going to uh, it is going to help and that's like uh, on a input side maybe the previous stage the capacitance the load you have to just work on that particular part like uh, what kavita was explaining that is a time axis the another thing uh, like if i will say the time axis is the x axis so uh, another thing is the amplitude axis which is a y axis we are talking about now what what is happening there there is a uh, vtn and the v uh, vtp you can say okay so basically when the nmos is also on that the pmos is uh, till now not went into the like an you know, off stage so that particular part so if you will decrease the um, uh, basically the the gap between these uh, two vtn and vpn okay so that means uh, uh, if you will just decrease that particular part then definitely that is uh, going to help you a lot because, so what will happen yes like obviously always there is a trade off so your nmos is going to switch on after a lot of time okay but uh, it will switch on the moment it will switch on maybe by that particular time uh, and uh, your the input signal strength is that much like okay it is going to switch off your pmos so if you can just do that particular uh, arrangement then uh, things can happen so uh, that's that's the only ways you can say okay so like uh, i play with the x axis y axis or like uh, kavita she was explaining like okay maybe you can just do some arrangement because uh, the current is uh, uh going into the the capacitance is also charging and it is something like uh, is going in the ground also so you can just play with the load balance uh, load thing like okay one thing is going to be like now very very less you can do in that particular way is it is it clear uh, uh sai shravan i hope so yes great okay so kavita what i'm going to do now there are a couple of questions on a youtube i'm just going to read out for you uh, so that you can answer that particular part okay. so one basic question uh, is uh, okay from the design and verification point of view what are the interview questions they can ask so now they are talking about like you now from the front end point of view like okay what are the questions can be asked by the interviewer so if you can just uh want to add something here see for design and verification uh, the questions in the designing part see two things come okay and uh, if you talk about the vlsi then front end back end you have to be clear from both parts first of all when the interviewer asks you he may ask the difference between both of them and then what interests you more nowadays company people are looking more for the front end part but you should have clear knowledge regarding the back end also because if you will not have the knowledge of the technology you will never be able to understand how the front end is all worked upon okay so you have to be a complete master of vlsi if you want to excel in your company uh, so 
in the designing part of course you must know the background at what technology currently companies are working and uh, how the uh, how the designs are, design parameters are being decided and what should be the frequency range and what should be the uh, par uh, um, what should be the par factors and how this par can be reduced which we have covered today and decide that many topics this is a very uh, big topic to discuss actually i can't uh, just answer in one thing and uh, if we talk of the front end part then co complete digital designing should be clear to you and uh, how the modeling is done and how different languages are being worked upon currently new and languages are also being added like uvm system verilog so these all you basic first you have to clear all the basics then only we can move to the uh, specialization so, part sorry to cut you uh, atavita so i think uh, his question is more or less like okay from the low power point of view what uh, the people can ask on the uh, design and verification side okay. so so guys uh, i just I just just want to add uh, one thing uh, like for this for this particular part like okay uh, from the low power how they are going to ask so what so now you can see if you know, from this uh, 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 i would say this presentation or the, this particular session now here we are talking about the transistor level portion like okay the the transistor level what is going to be happen now from that particular transistor level then it goes like uh, there are lot of uh, so there are a lot of techniques which is going to be like now for the power saving point of view we haven't discussed those techniques till now because uh, till now we were just talking about the internal transistor side what is going to be happen now when it comes to the designing side when it comes to like okay now you have to design a circuit okay let us suppose whatever we are talking about the trade off and all other things on the transistor level let us suppose we have done that particular part i will say like okay i will take care even after that if you want to uh, reduce the power how you are going to do it that means then in that particular case you have to make certain changes on the designing side so now when we are talking about the certain changes on the designing side so there are a lot of techniques like uh, we use the power domain we use like we divide the uh, we we partition the uh, overall circuit in such a way uh, from the architecture level itself on the design side in the rtl side itself like okay we are going to come up with the different different rtl at least so those things we will discuss later on uh, but right now yes those are the things if interviewer is going to ask like interview is going to ask in that particular perspective like okay how you are going to uh, partition your design or how you are going to design in terms of uh, the uh, design verification point of view for example clock gating things are there okay so if you are going to use a special circuit a special thing and then how you are going to uh, talk about that particular part so we'll discuss that particular part later on okay so there is a uh, one more question kavita like so is this the same reason why clock distribution circuit consumes significant power and uh, i think uh, uh, let me let me answer on your behalf uh, so Uh, the lakshmi uh, asked this particular question answer is yes like uh, because uh, when we are talking about the clock distribution circuits and the clock distribution circuit is basically uh, circuit is flip like uh, that particular circuit is working on the clock so whenever there is a clock what is so what is a clock is going to be like switch on switch off so like on off on off on off it's a continuous pulse so whenever there is a on off on off so that that means on the rising side also and a falling side also that particular circuit is going to give a lot of short circuit power okay and so that's the reason uh, i would say yes your answer is uh, 100 your assumption or your thing is 100% correct like it's going to consume a significant power and that's the reason there are a lot of techniques which we use <clears throat> to reduce the power uh, in a clock getting uh, sorry clock uh, uh, distribution circuit and like one of the thing is like the clock getting so we'll discuss that particular part later on and uh, there is a one more question so does it make any sense for using upf and static power saving techniques if we have uh, only 5% of the static power reduction in that particular case so this is kavita the question with respect to your slide where you have mentioned 
uh, 50, 75 percent, I think 20, uh, 20 percent and the 5 percent. So yeah, I mentioned that particular slide, you remember, like where you're talking about the, I think, second last or the third last slides is there. See, uh, I think you're trying to ask that, uh, does it contribute uh, in the majorly, I told you, for the battery applications, for the, you can say the portable systems or the handheld devices, this is a very large contributor, okay? At that time, if we say that this 5%, we can neglect, but we can't neglect. You are trying to say that, no? So what uh, What question, uh, the question uh, he asked, he asked like, okay, uh, if we are going to save only 5% static power, so does it make sense, like we work on the uh, UPF uh, thing, like, okay, uh, like we just work on the power saving techniques only to save the 5% of power. That's what uh, he's asking. Because just to save the 5%, uh, why should we use uh, power techniques? That's that's what he is asking, okay. Uh, See, uh, this thing I've covered uh, previously also, uh, in the previous slide also, uh, let me show you. So uh, I will add uh, one thing. So, uh, yes, so I think, yes, you're sharing that particular part. Yeah, so this- so I'm trying to is, say that what happens in the uh, battery operated, uh, for example, we talk of a mobile phone. Here it will, 5% means the switching activity uh, for the large systems, for the large devices. This is a major contributor, okay? We have certain techniques which are applied to reduce this. And this we can effectively reduce. This percentage we can effectively reduce. But this, for the static techniques, we cannot make it zero. Because if we'll apply the, we can see the static is composed of the leakage current. I told you, again, there is a trade-off because when we, when we will get the leakage current, the 5% part, if we'll reduce the supply voltage, if to reduce the dynamic power, we'll reduce the supply voltage. But if we'll reduce the supply voltage, what will happen? The weak inversion region will be achieved much more, uh, much more prior to the on state due to which there will be more subthreshold leakage current. Okay, so that is why this region is used for the operation of the devices. Nowadays, devices are being designed which uses this leakage current as the current of the device only. So instead of reducing the static power, this component is used as the working current for the device. Now that is again a, a separate topic complete, sub, how subthreshold region is used for the operation of the small devices, or you can say the ultra uh, low power devices are being designed by this 5% current, or you can say the 5% leakage part. Yeah, so very, very good point. So uh, one more point I just want to add. So like Kavita mentioned the 75% which we are talking about. So so this distribution which you are referring right now, this distribution is when you are not doing any power save. No, are not we are not any applying power. any technique. This yeah. is if, if, because we are just considering for an device which is just being manufactured uh, uh, for the use and no techniques are being applied on yeah. that. So now think about, so like, let us suppose you applied a certain power saving techniques for this 75%. So, and let us suppose you have reduced it and now it become like uh, you have reduced it. Let us suppose, for example, you have reduced 75% of this 75%. Okay, think in that particular way. So, but you haven't worked on this remaining 20% of the 5%. So now overall power consumption, okay? So now because uh, the power techniques which you have used to reduce the 75%, that is good. So uh, even if I will say, like, okay, for example, just for your calculation, let us suppose you use certain power techniques and now this 75% becomes zero. So now the power loss is going to be because of the rest 25%, yes. which become a hundred percent basically. Now yes, think because th for the portable devices, this is very large. Yes. So uh, that's the reason uh, like this, uh, this guy who's asking about like, okay, why we should use the UPF and all for the 5% because now that become that, that is not a 5%. Now for the hundred percent, that is, that has a very good, contribution okay so that's the reason we are using the another techniques to reduce that particular five percent okay so one more question which i think we have already answered uh the super tail was asking okay what is the difference the dynamic and the short circuit power i think you can go back and you can just see the video you will come to know what is what is that uh, that particular part 
then there is a one more thing can't we avoid this completely uh, so prashant maybe you can just uh, tell in more detail what exactly you want to avoid the the whole power the whole session or something like uh, the everything you want to avoid so maybe you can you just answer that particular part so there is one more uh, question i think and that's the last question as for the dynamic power dissipation we can reduce it by reducing supply voltage vdd okay so my question is how much or what is the maximum limit of reduce it okay so and let me let me uh, explain you kavita what is what is his question so his question is on the practical side he is asking the okay dynamic power dissipation we can reduce uh, uh, by reducing the power supply so means the vdd if you will just reduce the vdd then we can reduce that particular power supply so you just want to know like okay is there any limit is there any maximum limit which we can use to reduce this particular power that means in uh, in terms of the vdd is there any uh, limit uh, till that particular place we can go from this equation it is clearly visible that uh, power dissipation is directly proportional to the square of the supply voltage uh, so it's very obvious that if we reduce the vdd then automatically the whole power dissipation the switching power dissipation will be reduced but it we can only reduce it up to a limit but it depends if the device is working in the normal region then we can reduce it uh, to the you can say the um, up to that limit uh, the sub threshold region current should be avoided sub threshold current should be avoided. we should uh, scale it down greater than the threshold voltage you can say we cannot uh, make it equivalent to the threshold voltage in that case what will happen in the standby mode also the device will remain always on okay so you can say that the device should be in the off state up to the threshold limit we can make it vdd but uh, in the if the device is working in the sub threshold region then in that case we can reduce it below the threshold voltage also because at that time we are using the set threshold current the weak inversion current as the current of the device so it depends uh, for what purpose we are designing the device if it is ultra low power device then it can go uh, beyond the threshold voltage and if it is a normal region operation device then uh, slightly greater than the threshold voltage a good point uh, kavita so uh, uh, if i will just put it in a very uh, different way in align with the kavita so like uh, your question is like how much you can reduce the vdd and like kavita mentioned like okay see every cmos technology whether it is whatever the technology you are talking about so there is a one thing vdd uh, that uh, uh, this uh, threshold voltage okay now obviously uh for that threshold voltage is basic uh, that as uh, if you will say like, okay that has a dependency over the vdd that's not 100% true so threshold voltage uh, consider that uh, it has a dependency on the several other factors also so if you will low down your vdd uh through uh, by let us suppose the that particular technology so for a particular technology for a particular process there is a vdd is already defined i would say okay so that's like uh, that this is the optimum voltage like kavita was uh, mentioned now if you will go below that then obviously that is not going to work so it's going to affect the performance of your transistor uh, so if you so that's the reason people are not just uh, using this uh, uh vdd concept just just uh, blindly because they know like okay if they will reduce the vdd just to reduce the power uh, consumption then what is going to be happen it is going to affect the performance of my uh, my circuit also okay so and everything has a trade off okay so if you want to if you are like okay i'm okay with the performance of my a uh, transistor or the circuit maybe you can just go then again you have to see like okay whether your circuit or your that particular transistor is characterized for that particular vdd or not it should not be like okay you just go below a certain value and then uh, there is nothing like uh, uh, 0 1 0 1 it's just like always it's always on either the pmos uh, uh, or the nmos uh, is going to be always on in one case or other case okay uh good one i think uh 
okay so i think uh, almost we are uh, at the end of the things so there are a couple of other questions uh, kavita and i think it looks to me like okay we have to uh, we have to make maybe we have to plan one more session sometime uh, awesome. okay so we'll 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 discuss that particular part offline uh, when we have to plan is because now i can see people are talking about the more techniques uh, on the manufacturing side and uh, they are talking about the power saving technique point of view so we can we can just work on that particular part okay okay guys uh, thanks a lot and uh, thanks a lot kavita for giving us the time thank and, you sir uh, okay thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my views and uh... so thanks a lot uh, actually it's my pleasure okay okay so thank you uh, thank you everyone uh, we will uh, uh, like wrap up the session for the day and uh, we'll connect with uh, all of you guys uh, next time bye bye everyone